we pray. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we bless you and we appreciate you. We thank you because you are ever faithful. We appreciate you because there is none like you. You are the God that rules over the affairs of all men. We worship you. We say be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, we thank you because you are the giver of life. The Bible says in you was life and your life is the life of men. Thank you, mighty Father, for the gift of life unto every one of us through which you have brought us together this morning. The Bible says it's only the living that can praise God. We are here to praise you because we are alive. Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, as we have gathered unto you, God, this morning, we have come, O God, even to know your will and to do your will. Lord, we are asking, O God, that you give unto every one of us, O God, divine understanding this morning in Jesus' name. The Bible says the entrance of your word, it gave light and it gave understanding unto the simple. Lord, give us humble heart, O God, that we'll be able to receive your word even as it is in the name of Jesus, that none of us, O oh God, we argue against your word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit will be upon every word that is going to be spoken today in Jesus' name, because the Bible says the letter he killeth, but the spirit gave life. Lord, let your life come unto us, even by your spirit today in Jesus' name. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the broken hearted, to set the captive free, to open the prison door to the prisoner. Lord, we are asking, Lord, through the anointing that is in your name, we pray that you will set the captive free today in Jesus' name. Amen. As your work come forth, let the broken hearted be healed in Jesus' name. Let the prisoner be released in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the unsaved be saved in the name of Jesus. Let the backslider be restored in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. We give you all the glory because you are the God that hears and answers prayer. Spirit of the living God, have your way in Jesus' name. And glorify the name of our Father in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty Father. Lord, we appreciate you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are all welcome. As we have come to meet the King of Kings, he will meet with you, he will meet with me this morning, even through his words in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the, this morning we are going to be listening to a message that is titled, Worship the Lord your God. We know that this month is the month of, uh, month of what? Worship. Month of worship. So, we are going to be listening to a message that is titled, Worship the Lord your God. I know that many of us will say, well, you've been worshiping God ever since. Not even just at the beginning of this month. But this is a commandment from God. That worship the Lord your God. So, and it is the press sentence, worship the Lord your God, not yesterday alone, not just today, not just tomorrow. Presently, worship the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. And where can we find that? Matthew chapter 4 verse 10 says, Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. And him alone you shall serve. So now the emphasis there is not just worshiping the Lord your God alone. But you alone, him alone, you will serve. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I think uh, the technical is trying to do some uh, adjustment there. So uh, I don't want to strain my voice. If you can raise it up a little bit. 
Thank you so much. God bless you. So, not just worshiping God alone, but you, him alone you shall serve. Him alone you shall serve. Praise the Lord. So, what are we talking about here? The first question there is, what is worship? What is worship? And out of curiosity, I search dictionary. And the one that makes sense to me says, to honor or show reference for a divine being or supernatural power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To honor or show reference for a divine being or supernatural power. So that definition did not say that to honor men or to show reference to men. It's talking about supernatural power, divine being. So when we talk of worship, it's all about who? Praise the Lord. I know this is not Sunday school, but you will help me by responding when I ask that question. And God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. So worship is about who? It's about God. It's not about me. It's not about anybody. It's about God alone. Praise the Lord. And we're going to see some biblical examples in the Bible. Some examples of worship in the Bible. The first one, you can find that in the book of Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. I will read verse 1 and verse 6, 6 and 7. Daniel chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 6 and 7. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits, and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of burning fiery furnace. That's verse 6 I just read. So I've jumped. Verse 7 says, So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre, in, in siphony, with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image, which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So we can see a king set up an image, and he wanted people to worship that image. Which is an abomination unto the living God. And we have seen the definition of worship. Worship is meant for the living God, not for the image, not for a statue. It's for the living God. Praise the Lord. Another example there Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. Revelation chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. Say, Now I, John, saw and heard the distance. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophet of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. That was John, the beloved. And he was in a revelation. God was showing him a revelation. And he knew that it was an angel. And he began to worship that angel. And the angel stopped him quickly. Because the angel knew the implication of his action. So he was doing that ignorantly. And he pointed him directly back to God. Worship God. Worship God. The angel had no revelation of his own except the one God has given unto him. So and this is a sign of warning to every one of us. In any capacity you can be, either as a man of God in court, woman of God in court, never allow anybody to worship you. Whatever you have done, you have no power of your own. If you pray for somebody and that person gets healed, it's God who did it. Whatever happened, God walks through you and he performs wonders, not you. You have no reason to take the glory that belongs to God. If anybody's trying to put you in that position, you need to quickly tell the person, sorry, please, 
I did nothing. I am just an instrument that God used to accomplish this. And if I'm not available, God is going to use another person. So nobody is indispensable. So we need to understand that. And to some of us, don't worship any man. And if anybody, if you are in a position, somebody is trying to worship you, quickly decline it. Say no to it right away because it has serious implication. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Esther chapter 3, verse 2 and verse 5. Esther chapter 3, we are looking at some biblical examples of worship in the Bible. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2 and verse 5. Verse 2. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bow and paid homage to Haman. For so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay, homage, pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath. Haman was trying to play God in the life of people. But thank God for Mordecai. You understand what the scripture says. We're going to see some of those scriptures later. And he refused to do that. Some of you may say it's pride. It's not pride at all. If it was pride, it would not have ended the way the story ended. God, the Bible says, receives the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. God does not fight for the proud. So God fought for him. And the one that was proud... Eventually, God destroyed because he was proud. So not Mordecai that was proud. It doesn't matter what any Bible theology may, may say. It, they, it was, Mahima was, you know, filled with proud, pride. And the Bible says he was filled with rot because he did not have his way. And those are some of the things that we, you need to begin to pay attention to. When you are, we are in rage, you are filled with rot because some people are not praising you as expected, then you are looking for trouble. You are trying to push yourself in the place of God. That's what you are trying to do. You are trying to, you know, play God in the life of those people. Not here. I'm listening to a pastor who said somebody gave uh, something high. He prayed for somebody and then that person got the testimony and he went out to share the testimony and the pastor said, I mean, you need to mention the name of the people that God used. So why is that? You're trying to take the place of God. Please don't do that. And I pray that I will not do that also in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 32. Another example there. Exodus chapter 32. I will read verse 1, verses 7 and 8. Exodus 32, verse 1, verses 7 and 8. Now when the people saw that the Moses delay coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Verse 7. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down for your people. Go, get down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly, out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf, and worship it, and sacrifice to it, and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord. What an abomination. God moved by, by his power, and he wrought wonderful miracle. He dealt with all their enemies. He parted the Red Sea. The Bible makes us to understand that he carried them like, you know, like a bird would carry on his wing, and he moved them to the promised land. And yet, look at what was coming out of the mouth of those people. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible makes us to understand that these people, they have corrupted themselves by worshipping statue. So what are those things that represent statues in your own life? What are those things that represent idols? And you can see how God is going to be filled with rage. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 5. There was a warning to them already in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 5. Say, you shall not make for yourself a calf 
image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So when you worship an idol, when you idolize anything, you have set yourself against God. You are declaring, op making open declaration that you hate God. That is exactly what you have done. And that is not going to end well for anybody. Open declaration that you hate God. And I pray that that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. And that was exactly what those people did. Open declaration that they hated God. And look at what the Bible says. He said, he's a jealous God. He will visit the children up to third and fourth generation. So, I want to warn us again. Be careful what you do today. What are you worshipping? Uh, the time I have is not enough for me to begin to analyze some of the things that some of us can be worshipping. Or in the course of this message, whatever God puts in my mouth to say, I will still say it along the way. So, what you are doing now can affect third, fourth generation. Because you are making an de open declaration of your hatred to God. And I pray that that will not be your portion and my portion in Jesus' name. So, God is a jealous God. He can't accommodate that at all. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1, and two, verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. Then the, Lord, then the Lord appeared to him by the terebin trees of Mamre. As he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day, so he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bow himself to the ground. That was Abraham worshipping. Who was he worshipping there? Maybe I should just ask us. Who? God. He wasn't worshipping men. He was worshipping God. If you read the scripture very well, then the Lord appeared to him. He understand the appearance of God. God visited him. And all his bow, all his homage was to the living God. And some some uh, theologians said that three people that appear to him there, one of them is the son of God. One of them is the son of God. So, and with two angels. That's what they say, but I'm not really concerned about that. I'm concerned about what the word of God says in verse 1. Then the Lord appeared to him. That's what I am concerned about. So, he was worshiping God. Praise the Lord. We have been looking at some examples of worship in the Bible. Why is this necessary? We have been talking about worshiping the month of worship. But you must have some level of understanding. It's not just for this month. So that every day of your life, you understand what it means to worship. The last one there. Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 to 10. Matthew chapter 4 verse 8 to 10. Say again, the devil took him up on a, an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Can you see how devil... How Satan demanded worship from Jesus. He, de he was demanding for worship from Jesus. Because the devil knows the scripture. Don't make a mistake. Don't think he doesn't know the scripture. The same thing he did to Adam and Eve. He said, as God said, he knew the scripture very well. So don't let the devil manipulate your mind. Take cautious. Every step you are taking, what you are worshipping, ask yourself, 
a genuine question. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. We are hearing in the Sunday school today. When that question was thrown at Jesus, he could have just opened his mouth and begin to talk anyhow. Not, not so. He just bent down. He was receiving from God. Ask yourself a genuine question. Let not what you want to enjoy right now stand in the way. Immediate benefit. Be careful. Because God is a jealous God. And the devil would understand this. If, G if the devil could demand worship from Jesus, <laughs> what about you? What about me? He's, he will not, he's not a respecter of anybody. He's not a respecter of anybody. He knew it was Jesus. And if you read the story very well from the beginning of uh, Matthew chapter 4, what happened? He had just fasted 40 days and 49. If there was any time for him to run away from Jesus, that was, should be the, the best time. But that was the time he confronted him. So, what are we talking about here? So, I don't know if you fast 40 days, 49, maybe three or four times in a year, except the one the redeemer will declare for all of us. So, some of us are not even fasting two times in a week regularly. Not talk of. So, we can see what we're talking about. But thank God for his grace, for what he has done for you, what he has done for me. But we should not take it for granted. I pray that none of us will take it for granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, is Jesus your Lord and Savior? That's the next thing we're going to be looking at. Is Jesus your Lord and your Savior? The, the title of that message say, Worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. And then if Jesus is not your Lord, how can you worship him? They don't go together. He must be your Lord before you can worship him. You have an understanding of what him to worship God now, but is he your Lord? It's very easy for everybody to say, oh, I'm worshiping God. We can raise up our hands and we're worshiping God. But God knows those who are worshiping him. Is Jesus your Lord? You cannot worship whom you don't know. You cannot worship him. If you don't know him as your Lord, you cannot worship him. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 23 to 24. Acts 17, 23 to 24. That was Paul talking here. He said, for as I was passing through and considering the object of your worship, I even found an altar with the inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. Most Bibles, they have that to the unknown God in capital letters. To the unknown God. Who is God to you? Do you really know him? And that's exactly what Paul was talking about here. He said, the one whom you worship without knowing, that's the one I'm introducing to you. God is introducing himself to you again this morning. You might have been worshiping him. They've declared the month of uh, August has been declared the month of worship. From the beginning of the month up to this day, which is 27th of August, you, have been, you might have been worshiping him. But if you have not known him, that worship is, is just a waste of time. And it's never too late for you. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? It's easy to everybody to say, oh, he's my God. Is he your Lord and your Savior? Does everyone bear the record that he knows you? That you have a relationship with him? First Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. He say, the solid foundation of God stands sure, having this zeal. The Lord knows those who are his. Let him have anyone that name the name of God. Depart from iniquity. God knows those who are his. We can't deceive him. John chapter 10 verse 27 says that I know my sheep. They hear my voice and they follow me. So God knows his own sheep. Are you one of the sheep of God? It's never too late. The emphasis here this morning is that God is introducing himself to you because he's a merciful God. Because he wants, to, he wants you to be partaker of the benefits of worshiping him. When you worship him, there are enormous benefits that are there. But if you don't have a relationship with him, all those worship may just be in vain. And I pray that that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. 
Last weekend, we all gathered together here at atmosphere of worship. Of course, God was doing fantastic things. But don't be left out. Do you know him? Do you have that relationship with him? He's a food for thought. Have you accepted him as your Lord and your Savior? By the special grace of God, <clears throat> I took that decision. <coughs> Excuse me. Several years ago, I was a Muslim, and God him revealed himself to me. He saved me. He saved me. I had time to covenant with him. He saved me. So if you are here this morning, you have not known him, he's in the business of saving people. He doesn't de decide anybody should perish, but I also come unto repentance. He wants to do something in your life. Don't play church. Don't be religious. Don't be hypocritical. Your parents may be Christians. Whatever. But that does not guarantee your own salvation. You must consciously, intentionally say you want to know him. You want to accept him as your Lord and your Savior. Because if we are talking about worship and you're not, you don't know God, you don't have a relationship with him, worship is meaningless to you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I pray that the Lord will speak to someone here today in Jesus' name. Some, they have relationship with just the men of God, not with God. I mean, it may, it may sound funny, but that's exactly the situation of the children of Israel. They only knew Moses. When Moses was not available, what happened? They turned to a statue. That's what they turned to. Is that the case with you? Some of you, when you're in church, you want to prove something to somebody. Don't deceive yourself. When you go to your houses, your true color shows. You are at your place, your work, you show your true color. You are in your school, you show your true colors. But when you are in church, you want to be that holy sister, holy brother. You want to be the one, oh, yes, I am the one. God knows you. God knows you. Do you have a relationship with him? That is the most important thing, having a relationship with Jesus. Be connected to him from time to time. Stay connected to him. Don't worry about what anybody may say about you. But you, you have that inner assurance. You are not here to prove anything to anybody. The moment you begin to prove something to somebody that this is what you have, it doesn't matter. At that point in time, you are missing it already. If there is anything to prove, prove it to God. Let God know that. Get that assurance that you belong to him. Everyone bears that record. You wake up in the morning, that assurance is there. And you're going to see that assurance is there. And you are thinking, if rapture comes now, you are fine with him. That is what we are talking about. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't give hypocritical worship. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7 to 9. Let's see what the Bible says there. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7 to 9. Say, hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophes prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Their worship is in vain. Even God said they are hypocrites. He said hypocrites. That's what he called them. And what are they doing? They are worshiping God. The Bible says they come near him with their mouth, they honor him with their lips, but their hearts are far away. We can all gather here and be raising up our hands and say we are worshiping God. Where is your heart? Is your heart connected to the living God? Is there a connection between you and God? Or you are just giving hypocritical worship? Just like the Bible says, I'm not the one who said that. That's the word the word of God says. He said, hypocrites, your worship is in vain. I pray that your worship will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? You call him Lord, Lord, but you don't do what he says. You live in disobedience from time to time. 
And you can see, you can see the agony of Jesus there. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? It's the same message that is still passing across to us. His voice is still sounding every day. And that is what you are hearing now. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? You cannot just do what I say and you are calling me Lord. You are worshipping me. You cannot even do what I say. What kind of worship are you giving me? God is displeased. That worship, he said, is in vain. He's not going to accept it. And I pray that the Lord will give somebody a change of heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Are you doing the will of your Father? Are you doing the will of your Father? In one of the sermons of Jesus Christ, he was telling them, he said, you are doing the will of your father, which is the devil. Praise the Lord. So I will quickly go to the, the last part. Who is a true worshiper? Who is a true worshiper? Who is a true worshiper? Someone who has renounced every other God. That's a true worshiper. You cannot worship God and another thing. You have to worship only God alone. So you must have renounced every other God. Because of our time, Exodus 34, 13 to 14. I will quickly read it. He said, but you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wood images. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. You have to destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and call down their wooden images. What are those things? It can be anything. It can be love of money. It can be love of your job. Place God, jo your job above God. It can be spending unnecessary time even with ungodly movies. Even you don't even have to spend any time with ungodly movies. Books, ungodly books, you're reading it. How is that beneficial to your soul? It can be even be food. The Bible says, belly for food, food for belly. They will do what? They will all perish. They will all perish. It can be ungodly associations. It can be ungodly language, behaviors. Bibles make us to understand that. Destroy their altars. Destroy them completely, whatever it is. Whatever it is. So, before you can be a true worshiper of God, you have to consciously get rid of them. Job chapter 36, verse 11. Say if they obey him and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity. They are years in pleasure. That's what the word of God says. Obedience and service, they go together. So not disobedience and service. Some of us, we are living in disobedience and you are giving service. No, that's not for God. God is not going to accept it. And again, you are shortchanging yourself because the Bible says that if you obey and serve him, you will spend your days in prosperities and your years in pleasure. That's what the word of God says. So it's your responsibility to do it in obedience so that you can get the, the blessing. Praise the Lord. You must remain loyal to him, even in the face of challenges, a true worshiper. A true worshiper. I'm rounding up soon. A true worshiper. A true worshiper is not intimidated by anyone. A true worshiper. You're not intimidated by anyone. Do they know you as a true worshiper, even at your place of work? Some of us, you, 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 you don't even want anybody to hear your voice as a true worshiper. And you are worshiping the living God. I was telling my family, I've told them so many times, when I newly gave my life to Christ, I used to hide my Bible in, a, in an envelope because of the fear of what people are going to see, particularly my family members so that I will not be persecuted. I Muslim got converted and became a born-again Christian. So, but when 
God dealt with me, I will carry my Bible, I put on my head for everybody to see. I'll be walking around everywhere. Boldness came. And I was confronting everyone. I'm now a child of God. I'm a born again Christian. Praise the Lord. A true worshiper, you can't hide your identity. You cannot. If you are hiding your identity, something is wrong. You go to your place of work, you go to your school, you go to everywhere outside the church. It's only in church that they know some people as believers. They don't know you as believers outside, your church, outside the church. And you come here and say you are worshiping God. You live like them. You dress like them. Everything. There's no difference between you and them when you're outside the church. And you come here and say you are worshiping God. You need to have a change of heart. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. My time is uh, fast spring. So, I'm just going to stop there. We have been looking at worship the Lord your God. Worship the Lord your God. You have to look at the example, what it means to worship God. And most important thing I want you to take out of this today is this. Do you have that relationship with him? Is it your Lord and your Savior? If you are, it's not your Lord and your Savior, this is an opportunity for you to do so. You want to give your life to him. You want to surrender unto him so that your worship can be acceptable unto him. If you are in that category, you want to raise up your hand so that he can pray with you. Let's do that. If you are there, you want to give your life to Christ. Let us pray. Let's be on our feet. We just take two prayer points and then I will drop the microphone. I want us to pray. Is there anyone in our midst today who do not have that genuine relationship with God? Let's pray. That the, that the almighty God will reach out unto such individual. Convict such individual and bring such one into the knowledge of the truth in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty Father, Lord, we come before you, God, this morning. As we have heard your word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone, oh God, here who have not truly known you? Who does not have that genuine relationship with you? Lord, Reach out unto such one in the name of Jesus. Reach out unto such one, O God, in the name of Jesus. In your mercy, O God, save that soul in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone that says, O God, I've been saved, but he has backslide? He or she has backslide. We ask for restoration, O God, today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We appreciate you. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Finally, you're going to just take this prayer point for yourself. You're going to ask Jesus Christ. He said, I will know. You, this, Jesus Christ said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him alone. So you're going to make a declaration. You will not worship any other God, but him alone. You will worship and serve all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus, Almighty Father, Lord, I declare, oh God, this day that I will not worship any other God. You alone I will worship and serve all the days of my life. I commit every member of my household unto you, my wife, my children, oh God. Lord, they will not worship any other God. You alone, oh God, they will serve all the days of their lives. In the name of Jesus, I commit, oh God, even the people of God unto you. Everyone in this, oh God, the children, everyone that has identified with your Child. Lord, no one will worship any other God, but you alone, oh God, will worship and will serve all the days of our lives. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I believe you have been truly blessed, and I want to ask again, are you a true worshiper? If you are still worshiping other gods, I pray that this message, even when you are out of here, will resonate with you and you do away with those small gods in the name of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, we bless God for the word that we have had and it is my prayer. Even as we have prayed, if you do not have any relationship with him, if you like, come and be sleeping here every Sunday. I say it again. If you like, come and be sleeping here every Sunday. Your coming is an abomination. That's just the simple truth. 
But I enjoy us all. It's not about me. It's not about him. It's not about any of these ministers. It's not even about any general overseer. It's about you and him, your maker. I pray we will all live in this understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us begin to thank God for this day. Let us begin to say, Father, we are grateful that we have we are opportunity to come to worship you, to hear the truth of your word as, as written in the word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a privilege. What a privilege. Even that we can make bold, declare that indeed we are for you. We are grateful. Even for the opportunity to gather we bless your name. Thank you. Thank you. Even some of us have gone through persecution, intimidation, because we want to worship you as the true living God. But to the glory of your name, we are standing. We bless your name. Father, receive our praises in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for your son that you have used even to bring your word to us. That that boldness that you have given unto him will remain. It will continue to declare your truth, your counsel, even unto the ungodly. Amen. And they will come to the knowledge of your understanding. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We're going to pray. The Lord laid in my heart over the weekend that we should pray this prayer. And I know it's for someone. And it brought to my memory the story of Ega. We all know that story. How she was rejected. How she found herself in the wilderness. How she thought everything was done. The fear that she was going to lose a son was on her. But God appeared to her. I pray for that individual, that God will appear to you even as you go this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when God appeared to her, her problem was solved. And he said, I know God sees me. I am telling you, God is seeing you. That problem will not consume you. You may have been rejected. You are even saying, this is a wilderness. The Lord said, I should tell you, I am seeing you because I am the Lord the see. El Roy is his name. You are going to pray. The Lord, wherever I have been rejected, wherever I have thought I am in the wilderness, Father, I, I, I am asking you, see me now. Visit me now. In the name of Jesus. I don't know that area of that individual's life. But the person is saying, he has forgotten me. God, you are not seeing me. God said, I should tell you, I am with you. I, my eyes are upon you. And he will visit you. You will be favored. You may have been rejected there. But the Lord God said, I see you. You think you are in the wilderness. The Lord said, I am with you. Because you are the unchanging God. You cannot lie. You have said it and we believe that that individual you will visit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you my father. We give you all the glory. For we pray in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I want you to commit yourself unto his hands as you go in the week. Even that we will enter into a new month, declare unto yourself what you want God to do for you. Talk to him. It's God that hears all of us, particularly if you are his own. If you are his sheep, we were told in the message, he hears your voice. Lord, as I go in the week, let your presence go with me. Let your eyes be upon me. Let your eyes be upon me to keep me safe to grant me success, to grant me favor in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray this prayer even for my brethren that as we go in the week, your eyes will be upon us to protect us, to keep watch over our going out and our coming in in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I pray even as you go, 
his eyes will be upon you. You will not fail. You will not fall. He alone, the Almighty, you will worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please, let's share the grace in fellowship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless you all. God bless you.